John, FK Tuning Development. Hey guys, uh, hit the subscribe, the like, uh, follow me here or on Instagram, FK underscore tuning underscore development. Um, I do more about data log picture posts there and more just straight data. Um, overheating. Uh, two things, let's get it right out of the way. Intercooler and amorphous and turbo is not going to solve your overheating problem, okay? The FK overheats stock. Throwing an intercooler on means more fuel. More fuel means more BTU or British thermal units. It's more heat output. It means the engine's going to absorb more heat. Uh, it's like the myth that running lean causes a car to run hot. That's not true. Uh, just check out, there's a young guy and he's an engineer. He goes very into depth on this, you know. Um, we'll leave that for him to find out. You can find it out. He talks about turbos and a lot of the latest stuff from Chevy and uh, every other company's, because uh, Chevy's got a new thing from Borg Warner Turbo. There's a special dual volute design. He talks about that there, but um, basically, let me give you an example. If you have a heater that's rated for 3,000 BTU, it could put out 110 degrees. It could put out 130 degrees, but if you got a heater that's rated at 30,000 BTU and puts out 80 degrees instead of 110, it's going to heat up everything more. So... Um, if you put it in a, a 5,000, whatever 3,000 BTU, say it heats up a room for, I don't know, 100 square foot or whatever the heck it is, you put that one to 30,000 BTU, you better believe that room's going to be way hotter. Um, and it's going to get hotter way faster. Uh, so same thing with the FK8, because part of the issue that, two issues. One, there's not enough airflow over the radiator. Now, I have searched and searched and searched, and I cannot find an article that directly states the FK2 overheats stock. There are some things where you could look online and say, oh, as you upgrade, this is a good idea because you will be pushing the temperatures for an FK2, not an FK8. FK8, everybody knows. Uh, even in 2020, they said increase the flow through to the radiator by 13%, well, guess what? You might have said to get in three laps, now you get four. So it really didn't help. Um, airflow is the biggest problem. Airflow over the radiator. Um, changing the intercooler didn't really seem, as far as my data show, to have an issue. As long as the intercooler, the air flows through it properly, that's got to do with fin design. I have the Mishimoto intercooler. Uh, no issue as far as change there goes. I did upgrade to Coyer Radiator, not just because of volume. Volume doesn't solve the problem either, because again, um, it's just a matter of time before you hit that limit by adding a little bit more volume, but you have the ability to heat that to a certain time, to cool to a certain temperature, you're delaying the inevitable. Um, simply, instead of getting, okay, four laps, okay, now you get six, seven. Uh, that's not solving it. Now, better fin design, that's another story. Less air with a better fin design relieves more heat. Um, getting a grill is one of the best, simplest upgrades you can get. Um, don't block the air pass, the fenders. Um, I know there's a gap there. You see right through, but the air is supposed to flow through there. When the hood's shut, the air comes up over into the fenders and out down the side of the car. You block the air there, you're blocking more air inside your engine compartment. When you block the air inside of there, then you create a small pressure zone, and that pressure zone can't move. Pressure zones don't like to move without greater pressure. So, and the other thing is the hood is not a vent for cold air. It directs air down through the fenders for aerodynamics. I know it looks like it would put a uh, cool down under the hood, but if you look under there, uh, there's aluminum panels in there that direct the air to the sides. It does not direct heat out of the engine compartment. It actually pulls air in and through, down through the fenders. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Been a long day, a little tired. Back to the overheating. Um, so a track guy uh, sitting there, and I, they, he did he did a radiator, he did an oil cooler. Uh, I believe he even said he even did a hood, and guess what? He's still overheated. I uh, said, so did you do the grill? He said, no. I said, well, hey, you know, what good does it do if you get a bigger radiator and everything else and an oil cooler, but you the hood, I mean, you still can't get through heat through the grill. What, I mean, air through the grill, what good is that going to do? Um, keep it simple, guys. Don't overcomplicate it. And those reverse flow hoses, bad idea. 
Really bad idea. There's a very good reason race teams don't use them. The other thing is the data, I can't confirm it or, or not, because if you actually reverse the flow, the hot coolant goes right down there by the secondary coolant temp that triggers the fan. Just turns them on earlier. So, I mean, how do you validate that? Uh, I can't validate that. And the other thing is, if the car starts to boil, you can't pull air down with a water pump. Water pumps can't pull air. They can only push coolant. They can pull coolant and push it, but if you put air in the system, it, it gets vapor locked. Um, if so, if the coolant even happens to run low, the, it's going to vapor lock way, way worse than it would if the coolant uh, was low and the radiator hoses were correct because instead of drawing coolant from the base of the radiator, it's trying to draw air that would be at the top right by the, where you switch the direction of the hoses. So that's a very, a really not a great idea. I highly, highly suggest that you do not do that. Um, I, I know a lot of guys, oh yeah, just, you know, do this, that'll solve your, no, that does that's a, literally, guys, that is a bullet on a Band-Aid wound. It's, it's almost as bad as getting shot in the leg and then covering up with a pair of pants and saying the problem's gone. <laughs> that, that's really not a solution. So if you really want to tackle your overheating solution, oh, down pipes, um, a higher flow cat, um, it can help only because you're not getting as much radiant heat from it. Uh, a catless downpipe, you're not creating as much heat because a catalytic converter raises the temperature back up 400 degrees about. So you, you see like an 800 entry, a 1200 degree in there. So that heat will radiate through. Um, wrapping your downpipe, ceramic downpipe, yes, that helps. But it, again, and this is minimalistic. Uh, putting a turbo blanket, again, minimalistic. Uh, that's more going to be for... At that point, maybe trying to keep your air charge a little cooler by not overheating your intake as much by radiant heat. Um, if you wrap, if you put a turbo blanket on, keep in mind the turbo is water cooled. You keep the uh, compressor housing, not compressor, turbine housing hotter. Well, you got to cool that down more. So uh, keep that in mind. It's water cooled, same cool that cools your engine. Um, another thing is the actual exhaust on the FK8 cylinder head. Inside of the cylinder head, they have coolant channel near that actual single exhaust outlet. So that's another thing. Uh, you start running more air and fuel, well, you're going to heat up the coolant that's running through the cylinder head more again. Like I said, more BTU is a problem. Um, I, I, I don't have to go through the science, you guys, but feel free to look it up. So uh, literally, I'm not kidding. I know it sounds stupid, and it, but a grill, man. A grill, and actually a grill with the hood with the right type of hood, will flow more air through there, okay, than, and cover a lot greater amount of the radiator than just swapping a radiator. By all means, it, I would, if you don't have the money for an upgraded radiator, uh, you know, at least get a grill. You start there, you know. Uh, I have a huge Mishimoto intercooler. It does not cause my car to overheat. Okay, it does not block enough of the radiator. The way it was designed in the first place, you need to think about the fact that there's a crash bar right there by the intercooler blocking it anyway. You know, how much air do you really think you get down there? Uh, and plus a good intercooler design, the fins allow more air to pass through. Uh, so that's really not an issue. So unless you're blasting that intercooler with heat first, then sending it through to the radiator, then, you know, then you, I could see that, but the stock turbo isn't enough to do that. You get an upgraded turbo, you better believe that that air in that intercooler is going to heat up more before it gets in there. So the bottom line is the more fuel you burn, uh, the more the BTU output you're going to end up with. And that's the hotter that the coolant's going to, coolant's going to end up being. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There, it's just plain science, guys. Uh, so, I, if, if it was me, and I were to try to take it to the extreme, okay, this is what I would do. I would get, I would do the front grill, probably say the Jay's Racing. I'm not a fan of the way it looks, but obviously, the most amount of airflow. I would do a vented hood, um, an upgraded radiator, mind you, which I already have, um, an oil cooler, and... I do a catless downpipe and wrap it with a turbo blanket. And that's like, if you, if that point, if you're overheating, you something's seriously wrong at that point. I mean, guys, uh, I can't emphasize this enough. Airflow 
over the radiator is worth way more. If you turn around and, and did up what the, I wouldn't doubt it. If you did an upper grill and did exactly what the TCR team does, you wouldn't even have to change the radiator. I, I doubt you'd even need to change it. And those guys run under way more extreme conditions. Uh, yeah, they're not running all, like all this massive amount of power, but they're running much more extreme conditions. Uh, and I'm not sure what radiator they run, but, you know, you don't see them overheating. Um, and the only difference on the nose of that car is a splitter and that big cutout in the center, right in the bumper, where you can see through on the TCR car. So, I, I didn't hear anything about those guys ever overheating. And they've got a few more horsepower than stock. Stock's 306, they're rated at 330. And stock, stock car overheat in like no time. Those guys, I have not found anything with them having any issues with that whatsoever. And again, I cannot find a direct article that directly states an F stock FK2 overheats. So uh, I've looked and looked and looked and some guys make some references to it to say that, oh, the Honda learned nothing with the FK2. But I didn't see anything from an FK2 owner that says my car overheats stock on the track. So... Uh, if you guys can find it, okay, fine, great. Uh, but obviously, even though, yeah, we're in the United States, but it's still, it, you would think at that point it would have been seen at that point. It would have been uh, noticed So by someone, you know. And even when I look on uh, Dream Automotive, it was like the biggest, uh, like, Civic FK, FK2 site for in Europe. And they don't mention anything about FK2 overheating in their radiator and I looked on uh, a few other websites for FK2 radiators and I don't see anything about uh, actual stock car saying, okay, well the stock car over here, you know this, it doesn't say it at all. So thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching and uh, cam timing next. It's gonna be a little bit of a long video but I gotta try to make sure it's right. So thanks again and email me and follow me on Instagram.